Over the course of this video we're going to have a look at the enormous electromagnetic spectrum which covers a huge range of wavelengths and frequencies and a huge range of uses and sources as well. Uh, so here is a typical sketch of an electromagnetic spectrum. Um, so we can see we've got a central region here covering the whole electromagnetic spectrum. The visible spectrum has been expanded to allow us to take a closer look at it. And then uh, on this top bit we've got frequency and wavelength labelled. Down here we've just got the wavelength in nanometers. So the numbers we've got here is the wavelength in nanometers. Uh, along here we've got the wavelength in meters, so you can see we go from 10 to the minus 16, which is about the size of a nucleus inside of an atom, all the way up to about 10 to the 8 meters, which is about the distance to the moon. Um, so you can see quite a huge range, and so this isn't a linear scale, this is what we would call a logarithmic scale, so each time we go along, rather than going 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, so on and so forth, uh, we're going up in factors of 10, so here we go up by a factor of 100, there's a factor of 100, there's a factor of 100, so we're like going 1, 100, 10,000, uh, a million, so on and so forth. Um, along the top, frequency, same uh, sort of scale, going from 10 to the naught hertz, so one oscillation per second, all the way through to 10 to the 24 hertz, which would be uh, approximately a million, billion, billion oscillations per second. We've got some crude lines uh, sketched on here, but the thing about the electromagnetic spectrum is it is a spectrum, and so we don't really have these discrete lines separating the regions. They have uh, sort of fuzzy patches where they overlap a little bit. So if we take these gamma rays to start with, for example, their wavelengths come down to about uh, 10 to the minus 9 nanometers um, is where we would say x-rays are in all the way up to 10 to the minus 16 and beyond or down to 10 to the minus 16 and beyond whereas the uh, x-rays we tend to say start at about 10 to the 12 so there's this sort of overlapping region here where we sometimes we call them x-rays sometimes we call them uh, gamma rays and that's common throughout the rest of it. Um, so that's the uh, boundary between the gamma rays and the x-rays. The other end of the x-rays uh, comes down to about 10 to the minus 7 meters, um, with the UV starting at about 10 to the minus 9. Uh, so oh, that should be over there, shouldn't it? Uh, so UV starts from about there, 10 to the minus 9. Uh, so gamma, 10 to the minus 16, to 10 to the minus 9. X-rays, we've got 10 to the minus 12, to 10 to the minus 7. Uh, the UV, we go from uh, 10 to the minus 9, uh, down to the visible spectrum, which is here. So that's 3.7 times 10 to the minus 7. Which is 370 nanometers. So that then comes on to here. As we pass through the visible spectrum, we go from 380 nanometers up to 750 nanometers. Uh, off the other side of the visible spectrum, we come back into infrared which goes up to about 10 to the minus 3. So this goes up to about 10 to the minus 3, so that's up to a millimetre in wavelength. Uh, so here we're talking from a few hundred nanometers to nearly up to a micrometer. Infrared stretches us all the way up to a millimetre. So we're now almost at a point where the wavelength is almost on a human scale. Uh, these microwaves will then range uh, from 10 to the minus 4 uh, up to about 10 to the minus 1. Uh, so here we're going now from a tenth of a millimetre up to 10 centimetres. So 
uh, definitely on a human scale now. And they, you can do experiments with a microwave involving a block of butter, which let us visualize these larger wavelengths. Uh, then anything beyond about 10 to the minus 1 uh, takes us into radio waves, and there's a whole range of different ones. We've got FM, there's AM, so that's the sort of thing you listen to on your radio. This is all used for communication, so on and so forth. So these can get really, really long. So the ones you listen to, you can see that's in the region of 10 to the naught to 10 to the 1, so 1 to 10 meters maybe, um, but they can get, as I said, about as big as the distance to the moon. Um, so in terms of what we would practically use these for, uh, gamma rays are uh, produced through radioactive decay. We tend to use them a lot in uh, medical physics, so we can use them as the diagnosis, we can fire them at cancer to kill the cancer, so on and so forth. X-rays, again, large use in medical structure. Um, we can generate these with heated elements, though, which fire electrons at materials, which then generate the X-rays. So, obviously, you can go have an X-ray, a CT scan works on X-rays as well. Um, but because the wavelengths of X-rays is about the same as the size of atoms, we can also use X-rays to explore crystal structures. So we can use them to look at how crystals are uh, set out. If we've got lots of atoms in there, how are they arranged together? Uh, UV, we'll go into a bit more detail in another video. Obviously, that's responsible for sunburn, for tanning, so on and so forth. Um, it's a large part of the damaging portion of the uh, sun's radiation that comes down to us. It's also used for making things glow in the dark. So if you go to a club and you've got a white t-shirt and it starts glowing, it's because they've got the UV lights. The visible spectrum, that's fairly obvious. Most of what we have from that comes from either hot sources like light bulbs or from the sun. Um, it's very useful for seeing. We come into infrared. We can use that for night vision, and it's also emitted by uh, warm objects, so hot objects are required to come into the visible spectrum. We'd need hundreds of degrees to get into the red, maybe uh, getting into uh, thousands pushes it through uh, yellow into blue-white. Infrared is emitted by sort of room temperature bodies, and so we can use that for night vision, for thermal vision. Um, uh, but we can also uh, use it for heating. So if we warm something up enough that it's putting out lots of infrared radiation but isn't visible, then we can use that as a space heater. Microwave, obviously used for uh, cooking, um, but also this whole spectrum basically from microwave onwards gets used for communication as well. So the microwave region gets used um, in mobile phones and for satellite navigation. And then coming into the radio, that's the sort of thing that uh, obviously powers your radios, uh, or your television, telecommunications, so on and so forth. Uh, so there's a quick, nice introduction into the different regions of the spectrum, uh, and how we can use them, and the sort of typical values of the wavelengths. So it is a little bit messy. As I said, it's a spectrum, and so some of these overlap. Um, but just remember, we've got gamma rays coming from 10 to the minus 16 to 10 to the minus 9 nanometers. Uh, sorry, uh, meters. Then X-rays, we're going from 10 to the minus 12 to 10 to the minus 7. Then we've got UV going from 10 to the minus 9 up to the uh, start of the visible spectrum. Then we travel through the visible spectrum into infrared, which takes us up to about 10 to the minus 3. Beyond that, we have microwave. Beyond about 10 to the minus 1, we get into what we would refer to as radio waves.